hot damn son welcome back to Lori's Mechanical Marvels today we got you a feature of an American Lotus hot damn yeah you know that's an that's a British car here in America Lori being the idiot he is jumped in on the wrong side thinking he'd find a wheel over there and <laughs> boy was he wrong yep you, you do realize you don't need to talk like that the whole time right yeah I know So now you all have met my new friend, Trey, who owns this rather nice Exige. Now I know what you're thinking. The Exige isn't the normal kind of thing that I drive, but I have a huge soft spot for anything Lotus. I loved JM's Avora, which I spent a lot of time in, and I really loved JM's Elise, which I spent an awful amount of time in and borrowed it on many occasions. And I think with JM, I've now driven pretty much everything in the Lotus range, or at least a couple of years ago, up to when the, uh, the Avora 410 came out. So when I was offered the chance to go out in this, I jumped on it because I already know it's an amazing car. I don't need to actually drive it anymore to know that it's an amazing car. It's just stunning. And in this environment here, overlooking the mountains of North Carolina, this thing, just fits in so well. It looks stunning. It also looks amazingly small. The Elise and the Exige back home in the UK aren't exactly big cars, but here where everything is bigger because it's America and they have some ridiculously big vehicles. What we consider back home to be a large vehicle, over here, that's a middle to kind of small vehicle. This thing, it is absolutely tiny. Which of course brings us on to the other point. The owner thinks that this is the only Exceed within about a two hour radius of driving. And in fact, in his local hometown, he believes there are just five, including this, modern Lotuses. There's an Avora and a couple of Elises. So what we kind of take to be a, a relatively common sports car in the UK, over here, mega, mega rare. And makes it all the more special. And makes it all the more kind of exciting to have a go and drive it because it's so very different to the American staple. You know, you think America, you think muscle cars, you think Mustangs, which go very fast and very good in a straight line, but American cars are notoriously bad at going around corners. Lotus built for corners. And up here in the mountains, I can tell you already that it's built for these kind of roads. Now, when we started this review, Trey had spent quite a bit of time polishing and cleaning the car so that we'd be ready for review. And then we drove it and had a bit of fun. And so we kind of ruined his nice work. The car has been tastefully modified by its previous owners. It's got a carbon fiber rear wing, carbon fiber side skirts, carbon fiber front splitter, and carbon fiber air intakes on the side. And it's proper carbon fiber. They're not wraps or anything. They are very light in the kind of philosophy of Lotus. The present owner has also got a couple of roof variations. Presently, we have the soft top on because it's a lovely day and we've been enjoying driving around without the roof. He also has three variants of the hard top. He has the 240 Mohawk top, the half Mohawk and an Elise top because he wants to be able to change it and change up the style. He's also added the black across the back of the car to bring it more in line with the look of the V6 models. Which kind of brings us on to, we should have a look at the engine. Behold the beating heart of the Lotus Exige. This is the 2ZZ, which is the standard engine, which ended up in a whole host of these cars. It's a 1.8 four-cylinder petrol engine. The special thing about this one though is, is that it's been supercharged, which means that this generates about 220 horsepower, more or less is what the owner thinks, which means it's just got a little bit more than one would expect for this car. It's got the standard Elise Exige deceptive trunk, because I'm in America, it's a trunk, which despite the small hatch, there's a lot of space around here and here to put larger items in, as long as they're under 50 kg. It also has this, which is an emergency pop the boot from the inside. Something that American cars have to have 
so that you can open it if you happen to fall inside and somehow get trapped in the tiny trunk. I understand on some cars why you need that, but on this, you could only fit a toddler inside and a toddler is unlikely to be able to know that's what they need to pull to get out of the car. And then we have the very clever strut system to release the boot, which is that. The current owner has modified the back end slightly with these Greg's racing part rear taillights, so they're the, the GT style, which actually look really quite nice. The other differences to this car, so we have these little side markers here, which are required by US law, which we don't have, and there's another one on the front. The other modification isn't one that is quite so stylistic, which is the addition of the black tape here for the clip on this light, and this light has broken. And Lotus, at the moment, do not have the part in stock. So to stop the light from flipping out, the owner has put some tape on to hold it in place as a temporary measure. And so we could take it out and drive it today. It's very stylish. 10 out of 10 on Laurie's bodge points. I love being in these cars. The driving position is just amazing. The owner has his seat permanently mounted a bit further forward than I would normally like it. It's a, it's a bit tight, the knees are a bit high. But it's fine, you can see my nice pale knees. But it's so great. He has got this fitted, which is an awesome quick release steering wheel, which is lovely. It's also a Momo with the Lotus logo in the middle. It's, it's just lovely. It's a really, really nice feeling steering wheel. And it's just glorious here. Aftermarket stereo, standard Lotus control for the heating, working aircon, quite important out here. Everything's easily reachable. I always love the little tray that's full of stuff here. It's, it's a good little bit of design. The nice little fans. The only notable thing is the back of the gauges has been changed so it's a black faced gauge, which is actually really quite tasteful, but it's missing the plastic cover, the clear perspex. So if I really want, I could touch it, which I've been told not to do by the owner. But you know what? It gives it, it makes it a bit more raw and a bit more exciting and feels a bit more race car. And it's a really pretty little dash, which also kind of goes to show you how little you actually need. All I need is revs and speed. Everything else can just go away. There's the little digi display that comes up for fuel and water temperature. Don't need anything else. There's a gorgeous engine start button. I love engine start buttons. And just sat here, the view is fantastic. Good view from the wing mirrors, good view out of the back of the grille of the engine bay, and those lovely rises of the front headlights of the front clam. I love this car so much. And you know what? These seats are really nice as well. They're comfortable, but they're quite grippy as well. But you know what? That's enough of talking about what it's like. Let's go take it on the road. Get this much enjoyment 
on a road in the UK. It just, oh, I can't tell you how good it is. The way this car steers is phenomenal. You mentioned the steering, it actually does have a quick steer rack, which is a smaller number of you know, turn to turns to go left to right, full lock. It's not it stock. Yeah, it's a quick steer rack, which makes it even more direct and feel while, it while, feels while driving. Absolutely. It's just so good. And the car fills you with such a sense of purpose and such a sense of control and so much confidence that it's going to do exactly what you want it to do. The ride in here is also really nice. It's firm. The car doesn't roll at all. But it's not unpleasant. It's not uncomfortable. Yeah, I've actually swapped out the originally had the track pack with the adjustable bill stage from factory. Right. Now it has a set of one-way adjustable nitrons. Okay. So the step up from the Nitron Street Series, the one way. It's really, yeah. really great. Actually, I believe they're the same ones. Might have been like the upgrade from what uh, JM had. Oh, yeah. On his. Now, there's a tunnel. Tunnel! It's 
livable with it. It's not shouting. It's not in your face. We're able, we're able to talk in a conversational tone. Yeah. And, and hear each other fine. But if you want it, it turns into a monster. It's. It, we've had a lot of fun today. This review sh should not have taken all day. And, yeah, I think you drug it out just just so you can enjoy the car longer. Oh yeah, yeah. There's, there's, you know, I mean, like the last review you did was like over in 30 minutes and an hour. And, yeah. And we're like three days in on this one. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't want to get. Out. I mean, I actually can't get out of this without removing the wheel. But well, we got a shoehorn back of the house. We'll, we'll get you out. I'm a little bit scared by that. Oh, this is superb. It's one of the really nice things about the Lee Stenick Siege as well is the visibility. You've got such it's a tiny, tiny windscreen, but you can see so much out of it. And the nice rise in there just it reminds you that you're in something a bit special. The mirrors as well, are pretty good. I've got a decent view of my side mirrors. That's the uh, actually the V6, the mirrors from the, the these V6s overseas. All right, these are not the stock ones. No, no, they're not stock for this car. You've got a lot of other bits on this car, haven't you? Yeah, a little bit. So it's, I mean, maybe one day I'll actually like swap out the entire body and put a V6 in the back. Mainly because they weren't sold over here and weren't legal. Oh really? So I'll make my own. It's, this is the kind of the same thing as the Turbo MR2. It's but better. Yeah. Because it's supercharged. Top yeah, speed. I mean, it's more like the AW11s. Well, it's just a similar size, isn't it? But it's go kart, supercharged. I, I don't. I'm not sitting driving this thinking I need more power. I'm like, this, this is more than enough. This is oh. perfect. Oh, yeah, plenty, plenty of power to get you in trouble. Oh, I have no doubt. And my entire trip out here is just being like, the views are amazing, followed by, what is that old car? That's the Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. <laughs> it's that other thing to annoy Jane on cars. Uh -huh. Every time I saw something I liked, it's like, Ooh, piece of candy. Well, I think we broke him. <laughs> but you loved it, but he, he, he did not enjoy it. My bad. <laughs> The brakes are fantastic. They will stop this car on a dime, to use the local phrase. Yeah, I've, um, with regards to brakes, I've actually added a set of the front calipers. I bought some adapters and are running them on the rear as well. So for my main braking while driving, I've got the two pots front and rear, and the original rear brake is just a parking brake now. Right. Yeah. It's a little bit better braking. I like the way it stops. It's, it stops really, really nicely. And the, the way the power goes down is just fantastic. I can't stress the feeling it gives you. Some cars give you the fizz when you put your foot down. And this one really, really gives you the fizz. Combined with the just amazing way that it sticks to the road. It's just a phenomenal experience. Just Also lacks the words because he's American. <laughs> Why did you buy a Lotus? Or what did you buy a Big Siege? What made you want one of these? Because, as we said earlier in the video, these aren't common cars in these parts. Um, my background for the past. 15 years has been RX-7s, third generation RX-7s, the FDs, 93 to 95s, and man, several years back, I've always liked, I've always loved the look of the Elise and the Exige, and I had a friend that let me drive his up one of the local roads, and it was a blast, works really well, was great, and so I wanted one for a while, just never, never really thought I would, would go for it, um, and then finally about year and a half ago, I was like, you know what, let's let's see if I can do it. Started looking around on Lotus Talk, had some pop up, one worked out, and uh, yeah, you know, just kind of an impulse buy. I was like, you know what, screw it, let's do it. My RX-7's down right now, it's been two years into a project, and 
was like, I need a car to drive around and have fun with. So yeah, went out and just bought a Lotus and enjoying it. And, and you're, I finally did it. Any regrets? No. I would be very surprised if you had any, because it is just, it's fantastic. I've also noticed that when I uh, put my foot on the clutch, I hit the indicator. Yeah. Turn signal. The blinker? The blinker, is that, is that yeah, the blinker? Yeah, the blinker, you can call it the blinker, we'll know what you're talking about. Now my favourite thing about this car, and I don't know what yours is, is when you put your foot hard down on, on the gas, and you get the sound change to the cam to go over, and it, it goes fast. Yeah, with, with the tune on this, when the, the cam changeover is lower, um, about 45 to 5 compared to the original 62 but this was like yep nope I'm good it's, it's where this car needs to be for me and around here I'm, I'll have to get on the track to really see where its limits are yeah so you have uh, shown us how confident you are in the car when you've been driving around yeah it's it's, thrown, it's taking everything I've thrown at it and it's like yeah what, what else you got what, what do you want to do so yeah to safely push the limits and to learn it I'm going to have to get where I'm on a track I've got the space and not risky as much to if it if something goes bad. So, I mean, today I am not pushing this at all because a lot of the corners here have a rather sharp drop down to certain doom. Yep. And if the car didn't kill you, I would. British stuff does. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think you should make it a point to never review another Lotus back home. I probably review another Lotus back home. I don't think I'll ever enjoy anything as much as driving on these roads. It's on the proper side of the car. Do you know what? I'm enjoying it so much, I've kind of forgotten about that. But that is how nice this car is. That it's just easy to get in and enjoy cruising around. It's wonderful. But being on the wrong side of the road isn't a problem because it's such a nice car. It just drives the phenomenon. I kind of want to keep it. You don't mind, do you? Man, this is too small for you. Yeah, but I can and it see. runs. That was a low blow, man. That was uncool. And it's not rusty. You're hurting your feelings. It's not a project. Why do you say these things to me? Why do you say these things? You're not going to hurt me. The only thing I don't like about this car, and I'm being very tactful here because the owner is sat there and will hurt me. I don't actually like the window up and down switches. I think they feel a bit... Me. I'm just upset that I've got to reach all the way across the car to put down the passenger window. It is. They yeah. didn't put one on the driver's side. You would expect here to be two switches, wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, the switches work well and everything. I just kind of want something that feels a bit more substantial. I know they're lightweight and everything, but I want a more substantial switch. And the only other thing is there's a creak in the suspension somewhere. The bushes have been done, right? I, I, yeah, as far as I can tell, I believe the suspension's been, the bushing's been changed out. And I'm assuming that whoever did it didn't put the super the silicone lubricant, so it sounds like a creaky door. But that, that are literally the only downsides to this car. I mean, you can talk about the fact that the boot's small and it's only two seats, but we don't care because this is a driving car for driving with two tiny little things, which they're not even things I don't like. They're just slight niggles. But the suspension, I'm sure, if you really wanted to, you could sort out if you weren't. How do you ever do any work on this car? Because I can't see stopping it at any point. Just, I just want to, I would drive this every single day around here. You do, don't you? That's basically what you do. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm going to the grocery store. I'm going to take the Lotus. I'm going to check the mail. I'm taking the Lotus. Did we... The other night we took this out to go to the supermarket, and the supermarket was quite a long way away. We didn't go a direct route, did we? Yes, yes we did. Oh, right. That, that was... we, we went the most direct quickest route we could to the closest grocery store to, to the house 
I don't know why you think that the route to get there took 30 minutes and getting home only took two. <laughs> <laughs> the American is getting sarcasm. I watch a lot of British TV. <laughs> I learned from Doctor Who, Top Gear. Top Gear is like our bottom. Faulty Towers. You're a good man. And, and my grandmother, you know, made me watch. Oh, keeping up, keeping keeping up appearances, up. yeah. You've been raised on some good TV. <laughs> oh, it's gone off! Hey, have you seen that good American actor in house, uh, Hugh Laurie? Oh. I just. I just... No! You, you haven't seen it? No. You need to watch it. You need to watch uh, it. I haven't seen the American actor called Hugh Laurie. It's funny that. Where are we? Huh? Do you know where we are? Sorry, I was just looking at the hawk that the Yeah, we're on the parkway. Yeah, but the parkway how long is the parkway? 400 miles? Yeah, this whole thing's 400 something miles. I mean, we're gonna, we're either in Cherokee or we're gonna up into Virginia. You don't live in either of those places. No. British knockoff of Nomo. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. Oh man, just the way it sounds and the way it accelerates and it can yeah, really clear a bit of road and I can reach the pedals in a suitable way. It's just, it's magnificent.